I want you to close your eyes. Take yourself back to when you were nine years old. What were you doing? Probably not having negative thoughts towards your bodies, right? I don't remember this being a normality for my generation and probably not the case for yours, so it may seem a little far-fetched, but hard evidence shows that today, children as young as nine are having these negative thoughts towards their bodies. And to be honest, it's not overly surprising. They are bombarded by images of people who are presenting a carefully curated version of life. For me, at nine, I was simply fighting for my life. It was June 2001, and I had been diagnosed with cancer. Doctors spent nine months trying to shrink the cancer in my thigh, but with no luck. My parents were forced to make a decision that no parent should ever have to make. The only way to save my life would be to amputate my leg. I became one of the first in New Zealand to undergo a rare 14-hour surgery, but one that would give me the best chance at an independent life. Now, fighting cancer, that was really hard. Losing my leg, that was beyond hard. Spending a year learning to walk again, that was tough. But the hardest thing that I remember is the simple thought of putting on shorts. I battled with this for eight years. That's right, for eight years, I didn't wear anything shorter than my knee in an attempt at hiding my newfound insecurity. Now, it probably doesn't come as a huge surprise that after losing my leg, I lacked self-confidence, but something I quickly learned was that I wasn't alone, that all of my friends who, to me, had perfectly normal bodies were looking in the mirror and hating something about themselves. I was lucky because, although it wasn't the most ideal of circumstances, my adversity forced me to face my body image insecurities head on. After eight years of crying myself to sleep over why I looked the way I did and asking, why me? I began to see that I had had zero control over what I'd been through. That cancer, it had taken so much from me already, and I didn't want to waste any more time hating the skin I was in, whether plastic or flesh. It was only going to chip away at my happiness. So, on one extremely hot summer's day, I put on the shorts. I was 17, and this was the first time in what I've come to know as my new life that I was wearing shorts. I'd hidden away for so long because I didn't feel beautiful, I didn't feel normal, and I didn't feel confident. I believe a lot of this was due to the narrow view of beauty that I was exposed to as a kid. Growing up, there were no one-legged models in the media, I'd always known models to be skinny, mainly Caucasian, and 100% of them had two legs. And honestly, it's not something that consciously bothered me as a teenager, but slowly, I was being brainwashed. You see, only 8% of an advertisement's message makes its way to our conscious mind. The rest is worked and reworked deep within the brain. So the amount of misinformation that we absorb throughout our lives is immeasurable. We're all different, right? Yet very few of our differences are represented in advertising, making us feel the need to change who we are to fit into this mold that's been created. For me, that meant hiding my leg, but I can't even begin to tell you how liberating it felt to break through this. Putting on the shorts was the beginning of me learning to love me exactly as I was. Now, my generation grew up being sold this unachievable and simply unattainable perception of beauty. We've been led to believe that our appearance is what's important and that beauty lies within the specific mold that's been created. I don't remember a time when diet pills, how to lose 10 kgs in one month, and absurd food restrictions weren't plastered everywhere. Along with this, overly Photoshop models are being used to sell products that we must buy in order to look like them, who often don't actually look like that. 
In my research to dive a little deeper into the mysterious world of imagery touching, I came across a woman who has spent her whole life as an imagery toucher. She talks about how this imagery touching begins long before the computer gets involved, and she's worked for massive brands like Victoria's Secrets. Now, ladies, I bet you've always wondered why you go to buy a swimsuit you've seen sitting perfectly upright on a model in a magazine, only to put it on and realize it hangs a little differently. So we assume the problem must be within ourselves, that we must have abnormally saggy boobs, that those models defy Newton's law of motion that states what goes up must come down. When in actual fact, these models are wearing a push-up bra underneath the strapless bra that is then removed in post-production, giving the effect that this swimsuit will in fact give you perky boobs. It's literally absurd when you stop and think about it, but it's all we've ever known, and I think we're only just beginning to understand the harm that it's had on us for generations. I consider myself pretty lucky to have had a head start and a unique perspective on hashtag body love. I grew up surrounded by people making comments about how they wish they could change things about their bodies, bodies that to me were so perfect because they had their whole bodies. They'd wish for things like a thigh gap while I was simply wishing for a thigh. (laughs) So once I found a way to love my newfound adversity and for what it had helped me to achieve, I knew I had a responsibility to help others find that love within themselves. This is the day I decided to help change this. I wanted young girls to grow up seeing images of real people showcasing their differences in the hope that they wouldn't grow up hating their bodies, that they wouldn't grow up feeling different. Because I don't believe we grow up disliking our bodies. It's something that we're taught to do. This photo shoot with my perfectly imperfect self ended up going completely viral, landing me with a massive social media following and an engaged audience showing me how many of us are screaming out for this change. I've since been signed with a modeling agency in LA who work with incredible brands who are representing diverse people, also known as real, and using their images to represent their brands and kind of just generate this change among us. But this is a very old and very stubborn industry and I learned this the hard way. This is a photo from a recent shoot I did for a local women's magazine. I was speaking out about being confident in your body. When I received a copy of this magazine, I felt proud. There I was, me being me, speaking out about what I was passionate about and showing people something real. At least that's what I thought. A month later, I received the images for my portfolio. One folder had the images I'd seen from the magazine, Another folder titled Untouched had the images of how I'd actually turned up to the shoot that day. And that's when I realized that my images had been retouched. Totally unnecessary changes. Changes that have just become a part of the process for so many in the industry. But it's time this stops. I'm putting my foot down, ideally the one I can't feel, and saying enough is enough. Now, I think the biggest concern lies in the generation coming through. You see this generation that I just spoke out about, my generation? We've been brought up to believe that this perception of beauty is real and that we've been exposed to it our whole lives. We are now the content creators. Through the powerful tool of social media, we are curating our lives to live up to this perfection. We fill our self-esteem up with instant gratification from likes and comments. We get on photos so highly curated that they don't often depict our real lives. But it works for the time being until we put our phones down, look in the mirror, and go back to hating the bodies that we've been led to believe aren't perfect. Now, I believe there are two ways we can address this. One... We can ban photoshopping altogether, but unfortunately, that's not overly realistic. Or two, we create a regulation that requires brands and advertisers to disclose if the appearance of their model has been changed. It would look something like this. 
About a year ago, a health minister, highlight the word health, from France has created a law that the French must state that all commercially used imagery where models have been retouched must be disclosed. But it's been over a year now, and France is still the only country doing this. Arguably, the world's fashion capital has said enough is enough, so surely it's time the rest of the world gets on board. Cigarette packets have a warning on them saying that this is harmful for your health. We need to do the same for our mental well-being and for the well-being of the generation coming through so that they don't grow up hating their bodies and thinking that they're different because young people do not grow up hating their bodies. It's something we teach them to do. But I still believe that this is only a stepping stone, and the real end result here is this. I worked with this magazine in their pursuit to represent real bodies, 100% untouched, showcasing the real me. And this is how we teach young people to grow up loving their bodies, to grow up feeling confident, to grow up feeling empowered so that they can chase their dreams. I often wonder where I may be right now had I not found a way through my insecurities, and I can tell you for a fact that I would not be standing on the TEDx stage right now. I wouldn't have found the confidence to become a model, to share my story with the world, and to have had the opportunity to inspire. I fear that I would have been so held back by what makes me different that I never would have realized that those differences are what makes me perfectly imperfect. Thank you. <laughs>